Welcome to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Joan and Janet are subtle energy empaths in the field of consciousness. Their passion is to support your evolutionary growth and change. Join them as they talk about our individual and collective evolutions. Explore what living consciously with energetic awareness means in our daily lives. Access with them a state of grace. There is no time, no space. Feel the warmth and acceptance and opening into infinite possibilities. Combining a broad collection of modalities and personal experiences, they share with humility and humor their appreciation for the body, mind, spirit connections that we call life. Now, here is Joan Newcomb and Janet Barrett. Welcome to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. We're your co-host, Joan Newcomb, coming to you from Tacoma, Washington, and my partner, Janet Barrett, from Portland, Oregon. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another fine day and edition of Conscious Conversations. <laughs> yeah, we have a great show for you today. And Jan and I are going to update you first on things that we have going on. And then we're going to be talking about uh, handling extreme reactions, addictive behaviors, panic and resistance. Lots of fun stuff. But first, some announcements. So, Janet, what's happening uh, with you? <laughs> oh, let me see. We could have gone into all that conversation right there that you just mentioned. All of that, all of the above and. <laughs> <laughs> and even more. So I'm having, any, well, I'm, I'm having a different experience in the event that I mentioned before about in New Hampshire last week or the week before. So right now it looks like I'm going to be having a nice, beautiful journey of experiencing fall leaves with my husband and seeing clients that like to see me in Boston and a couple of different locations. So I'm looking forward to all the dynamics that have been happening. And one of the things we're going to talk about is how to have a sense of well-being, even in the midst of different things going on and how to keep your sense of balance in that. And I'm a perfect example of what's been in flux in my life and I'm sure is going on in yours too. Yes. Yes, and I, I, we talked a little bit about New Hampshire, and uh, it just sounds like what it's what's happening now. It is growing into something bigger, and it's expanding to many different c- cities. So you're available to see people in Boston, and uh, up in Maine, as well as uh, in New a Hamp- different area in New Hampshire, yeah, right? So right, that right. is just that sounds like a lot of fun. So if anyone out there is in the Northeast and you would like to see Janet up close and personal and get <laughs> Some miraculous transformative <laughs> sessions. She is awesome. Okay, oh. awesome. You can do that by uh, going to her website, janetandbeyond.com, or emailing her at janetb at janetandbeyond.com. Little plug for you there. <laughs> Thank you, Joan. Thank you very much. Okay, and what's been going on in your corner of the world? Well, there's been, there's been stuff, and <laughs> what I see with going on in everyone's life is there's is that there's stuff going on and it's really a roller coaster ride that started in the summertime but um and and there's some people who around in my sphere of influence who have you know legitimate tough things happen they've got you know parents who are ill or they've got you know uh they've been laid off from their job or things Mm -hmm. like some really major things that contribute to it but there's also something sort of energetically building uh, this sort of mm-hmm. tension that is building, mm-hmm. um, and you can ascribe it to the astrological weather, like the eclipses mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, and I just think we're all sort of, you know, it's all part of our evolutionary process. So, um, you know, I have a lot to contribute to the extreme reactions, addictive behavior, panic, and resistance <laughs> as well. Um, however, I want, I, I also want to uh, do. Uh, uh, You're providing manifesting money and miracles for free, right? So what is that? What are people going to get with that, do you think? And I am now giving away for free a seminar that I, uh, I, I did yet last year um, to help people raise their vibration to uh, accept more abundance and wealth into their life and with an additional brand new technique that I, I created to actually start manifesting miracles in their lives. And so now that is available for free if you go to my website, which is joan-newcomb.com and enter your email address and you can actually get that 
that four-part series for free. Right. Uh, and the thing that I have coming up uh, later this month is a reinventing yourself webinar. And so I'm actually going to be talking about this. You know, we're we are going through a peeling away process and and it's an opportunity to reinvent ourselves, to step into doing something new. So whether it's, you know, changing careers or uh, you know, becoming retired or getting divorced or all those other things that happen that that uh disintegrate an aspect of your identity. I'm going to be talking about how how to reinvent yourself and how to energetically um, bring that creation into your reality. So there's more about that also um, on my website at joan-nukem.com. Great. Well, we're talking today about how having a sense of well-being mm. and accessing heart space, which was something we've been fostering each week, allows you to to navigate all these travails of behavior and experience and energies that are out there and in the world today and as cuz how how do you how do how are we in the world today noticing what's going on around us and if we use the word trends then we can see that people are following in patterns and they come and go and what's up this that you and I are both commenting on and is this dynamic it's very lively out there there it's chaotic it's where things plates of pressure and power or forces are coming together and breaking apart or resonating or ringing in our ears and in our beings and what we're looking for is how do we hold okay in that environment and this is what we do we say consciousness has a way of engaging all of that information and flow and you do it through the field of the heart you do it because it feels good bottom line you do it because it's an opportunity to experience the calm when all that is in mayhem and certainly uh, you can do, most of us can have a sense of well-being maybe in our body or we have it in our mindset or we have our emotionals. They always feel stable and we weather through everything. For me, in my own personal life experience, I have great sense of well-being in my spiritual meditative zone, right? My body was where I felt compromise, but I didn't have a sense of well-being. And I must say that, um, but if someone was to say, do you have a sense of well-being? I would have said, oh, yeah, sure, I know what that is. But I never felt that in a body, physical sort of way. So in my birthday last week, uh, that that 60, 60th and what that represents in so many different uh, fields of influence, I was really able in this last month to finally fi feel that from a physical way. And in having that anchoring, it's just been delightful, especially with all that came around energetically around that birthday. And um, so I can feel good in spite, in, in the midst, in resistance, whatever. And I'm now happy to own that physically. So uh, everybody is also in that. And uh, you and I have been having much discussion about noticing the differences that we're navigating week from week in, in all this turbulence. And we're okay. Yes. We're very okay. Yes. So um, I wanted to, uh, our focus here is on consciousness. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to clear uh, for people uh, some of my background about uh, uh, addictions and extreme reactions and, and some <laughs> of my, my knowledge and experience. And Janet has some great physiological info about this. And, and I come from a, some experiential backgrounds, but also from a recovery background. So I know that, um, you know, we both, when we, we're talking about addictive behavior, you know, we immediately think of people who are, you know, they're alcoholic or drug addicts and they're, you know, and their, their behavior comes from using too much. And, um, 
and there that is that's one level of of you know your behavior directly coming from the substance that you're uh, you're imbibing. Uh, mm-hmm. Though the other thing to to realize is that you know uh, caffeine and sugar have an effect on your brain chemistry, and um, and actually bread mm-hmm. breaks down into sugar. Mm-hmm. So you know. I know that these time of years, <laughs> this time of year, I, t- I can become, um, I can have an all all carb diet. You know, I'll be a breadaholic because, yeah, you know, because uh, because it's you know it's cold and it's comfort food, but it breaks down to to sugar in, in your in your brain chemistry as well. So th- there's there there's a body level where you can be born with the addictive gene or that you can create addiction through overuse but we're medicating ourselves with these substances all the time as well and so that's on a body level on a personality level if you um, come from a family background where there's addiction you may not drink but because you know if you're an adult child you you could very easily have the same behaviors as an alcoholic because be, just because from you're carrying that pattern through right. um, and we were also talking about you know, other ways to medicate like you know tweeting or texting um, there's there's in the recovery field, you cut, they talk about secondary addictions, which are, you know, shopping, uh, you know, spending money, gambling, uh, pornography, uh, other aspects of sex. I mm-hmm. mean, there's lots of other, you know, there's an infinite amount of ways to do that. But you, you also were talking about well-being and, uh, you know, the, the recovery field would call it a serenity. Is that it is, it's how do you... Well, how I, do you either yeah. wait, 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 how do you regain yeah. your sense of, of serenity? <laughs> and uh-huh. also, um, how do you regain your sense of serenity, but also um, how to maintain your serenity when everybody else is losing it as well? So there's some there's some great things and energetic things uh, you can do as well to, to, to stay sane while everybody about about you is bouncing off the walls. Totally. Okay, there's my word, totally. <laughs> okay, well For being, sure. Yeah, it, well-being is inclusive of all kinds of different things. It's wholeness, right? And um, the, the physicality, and which I know of little, but in my own awareness of how I've had to deal with life, I've come to the, the – in the brain – Cessation, reward, and learning are in the same place, mm. and when you, and and that's helpful to me uh, to understand that if I'm, I'm learning and reward are tied into how much I feel good, because that's what cessation is. Something feels good. Something got enough. You got enough of something, and people acting out can get tipped off of that sense of I have enough through a chemical experience, through an emotional experience, which is producing chemicals with events that consciousness is choosing how I filtered and formatted this human experience. And I just go back to consciousness. So how far am I off in experiencing that in a way that's active and alive and present and my life for the last 60 years has been ex- about exploring that on all these different levels we are physical mental emotional psychological psychic spiritual creatures those are all the realms of experience and information and thank you cam ewan and the ewan method for that consolidation you put in the matrix energetics part of the component that you and I are also to deal with. And it's we realize that there's states that are associated in different realities that are associated with our experiences. We introduce potential, which is the the possibility that things can be different. You can have all kinds of different experiences happen and underlying is still the sense of wholeness and well being. And that's what we're looking at. That's why we uh, we foster heart connection, the field of the heart, being present there, so that things can happen, but the underlying sense of I am safe, I have enough, I'm okay, is there. 
And it doesn't matter whether it's happening to me in a physical experience or a mental experience or an emotional experience. I can go back because I'm basing everything from that place. And that's what we we want to share with people is that there are so many different ways to experience information. And as consciousness, what are you choosing to resonate with? You're setting up patterns. We're going to, we tap into those patterns and say, oh, what if that could be different? What if that is only what it is and something else is possible because the science tells us something else is possible? So it's a different way to engage the reactions, the behavior, the panics, and the resistance. It's enough to be able to step back, be neutral about it, and go, oh, isn't that interesting? Look at that drama. Because we're all drama queens to some degree. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's what's interesting about being human, right? So it's even yeah. more hu interesting for spirit to be human. <laughs> I, I prefer to be a drama empress myself, but um. <laughs> okay, I love it. All right, how many of us out there are signing up for a drama empress? Right. <laughs> All right, <laughs> good for you, Joan. World domination. <laughs> That's so, it. Uh all right, we're, well, we're coming up to the commercial break here, but uh, stay tuned because when we come back, we're, we're going to just talk about these topics, but in a state of grace and consciousness. So Janet's going to bring us into the heart space and have a completely different experience of navigating from consciousness these thing, all these topics about uh, addictive behaviors and crazy stuff. <laughs> so we'll be right back. This is the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. Are you ready to take a quantum leap in your life? Joan Newcomb is a conscious mastery coach who empowers you to navigate life from your own inner wisdom using energy techniques. Contact her through her website, joan-newcomb.com, and take conscious mastery of your life today. That's joan-newcomb.com. Are you a spiritual seeker? Have you always pondered the deeper questions in life? Have you looked at many spiritual paths and found some answers, but are looking for more? The Open Door, brought to you by the Summit Lighthouse, brings you each week practical spiritual teachings and tools that promote self-mastery, higher consciousness, and the opportunity to connect with the Ascended Masters. Join Tom Schumacher and Terry Kennedy as we explore the universe of spirituality. Live every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on the 7th Wave Channel. All day long, we sort out clutter in our minds and bodies, all the while trying to find that healing modality that will work for us. Tune in to Inner Mission with host Patty Campbell. Each week, we'll explore a deeper spirituality and the healing process. Everyone has the capability to heal themselves. Let us help you find your capability in the hopes that you will pay it forward. Intermission Journey to Wellness is broadcast live every Thursday at noon Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Pacific Time on 7th Wave. Be the change. The 7th Wave Channel on the Voice America Network. You are listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. To reach our program, please send questions and comments to Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. That's Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. Now, back to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Welcome back. You're listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I'm your host, Joan, along here with Janet, and we are talking about extreme reactions, addictive behavior, panic and resistance, and lots of fun stuff. But first, Janet is going to take us into a heart space now so we can experience um, how to navigate these things from a, 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 an awareness of consciousness. Right. So let's all feel well. <laughs> there we go, people. All right. Okay, so just, that's good. Yeah, that's it. That does it. So just notice, okay, and noticing is a word to allow you to engage your senses, 
And uh, when we ask you to notice information, it's just all information out there. So let go of what you're thinking about, feeling about. Put that up over there. And maybe you're having some question about an addiction or extreme emotional response or any of these things that we've mentioned here, uh, panic or resistance. Um, Just put it over there. And we're just going to join together and going to the elevator, drop, hit the, hit the heart floor, and that'll locate us down into where we think our physical heart is. So just drop your awareness down in there. Take the time on the part of you that has the attention to this. It's okay if you, how aware or unaware you are in this. So there you go. Ding! Floor opens, elevator doors. Notice the lobby you walk into. Just notice how bright and colorful or dark and dismal or doesn't matter. You don't be attached. What you want to notice is what catches your attention. So just notice. Take that with you into the next room. And the next room is where we all are. And you notice it's warm, supportive, non-judgmental. It's where you find potential interacting with information. This is the all. This is where grace is. This is our starting position in your heart field. So just notice. Notice you're probably breathing a little easier, deeper. (sighs) Oh, so nice to be out of your head. Notice your shoulders are relaxing. Just let go. Now, some of you might not be comfortable with letting go. So just notice that. What if you had more comfort with it? And there is no judgment here. But we're all here. And this is unified field. Field of the heart. And we're just going to be here. This is where your sense of well-being is. Now just notice, are you smiling? Are you grumpy? What is your sense of well-being? So from here, we asked last week or the week before when we talked with Justice, who does all this heart work also, why be here? Well, just notice. It feels different. It's easier. And the awareness that, well, I'm not in there, so go there. We're going to just say that it's okay to be here. You're developing your awareness. It's not that you're not in here. You're developing your awareness that you're in here. You are here already. You're developing your awareness that you're here. Those are different things. There's nothing outside of you to go get or chase or hold yourself separate from. This is the awareness is that you're already here and you're just developing that awareness. So just notice. You can feel well here because you do feel well, because you're willing to listen. This is not a place of control. That's the mind. That's up there. Here, you're just willing to experience. This is what's key. So this is where we focus. So just notice that thing you were thinking about up there. It's kind of changing. It's kind of just floating away. It doesn't really matter what it was, does it? It'll come back. But from this positioning, it can start to introduce potential to it. So what is the potential, Joan? We get stuck in our thinking, don't we? Oh, and this was a question that Dave from Colorado mentioned about his topic, about how to keep his vibration high and getting bogged down in the day and how do you keep above everything right and this is what you and I would say to him isn't it go for heart yes Um, go for heart Um, you know he also uh, let's I'm going to read out what he well what maybe you said what he said was uh, he said I do the best I can to keep my vibration high. I often find myself getting bogged down in a day-to-day tasks and seem to inadvertently allow the feelings of being separate rather than connection. Do you have a suggestion for keeping the energy flowing through the chaos? 
So there, it, a, it is a, um, it's an art, I would say, to, <laughs> to, to being in your heart space and staying connected on a heart level with people. So maintaining that affinity or even love that you have and yet being detached from their behaviors, uh, crazy chaos stuff going on. So, um, so the, it, it's, there, there is a, there is actually a, a separating from the crazy aspect and yet still maintaining that awareness of, you know, loving that being regardless of how, what you know, batshit crazy they are. <laughs> <laughs> That's a technical term. Of That's a technical. That's a, okay. <laughs> it's like the psychological definition. Yeah. may be incurable. I'm not certain. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> you know, so so uh, you know, there's a there's this joke that if you know your alcoholic loved one passes out on the lawn, you know, detachment is is you know they had the consequences of their their actions. So you you know you you. You would leave them on the lawn. You wouldn't try to hide it from the neighbors, but you may put a blanket on them, um, you <laughs> okay. know. But right. detach it, but, but it, it's not turning on the sprinklers. Mm-hmm. Right. So. Right. How do you keep your eye? Well, you know, I think we set up, oh, gosh, you can hear how we make judgments uh, in this, in our need for structure, there is a sense of high, there is a sense of low, there is all these things, and we tend to organize information in our bodies, like as our reference for in chakra systems or in vibratory systems, and all this. The challenge that we have is we have to be very diligent and paying attention when we do that. I would say. And I have found for more of my sense of well-being that if I thought that my life force is coming in my root chakra area, for instance, because a lot of systems organize this way, that I can feel certain things about that. I can feel good about that. I can feel bad about that. I can not pay attention. I'm not helping myself within my sense of my own container when I go, ooh, that's good or that's bad. Because it creates separateness. And so he, and he mentions a good point. I like to keep my vibration high. Well, I would say your vibration is always high. I think you shift your awareness of what part of your vibrational spectrum you're in. I'm going to change that language. I'm going to say I vibrate very high, right? Just as being in a physical body, having a presence as consciousness. I'm going to start to remove the barriers, self-imposed limitations I have on how I'm going to experience information. I don't think it's helpful. I think it's a way to beat myself up. I notice people doing it all the time. So I'm just going to not do that here. Just be in your heart. There, none of that is real. It's just information, a sense of well-being. But we've got it so conditionalized, dropping into my heart. Well, even that is saying I'm taking out of my head. There's nothing wrong with thinking. We want thinking, though, to come from this place. And when we allow it to just be a mind dance and it's just about control and it's in reaction, responding, responsibility, obligation, that's not helpful to what this heart is telling you. It's different. We have encoded the state of being and feeling your truth for you as a bad thing. I have to think bigger than that. I have to rationalize why I'm in this abusive situation. I have to, why isn't my heart being, that's all heart. And then we get into the emotional energy around it. And we get wounded heart going. And we're, we think we're coming from heart, but it's coming from the wound. And that's not helpful either. We're engaging past beyond that into where it's just unified field, information showing there is no up, there is no down, there is no over there or here, there, none of that. This is just a space, and that's why it's so expansive for people to be in this place, because it's removing all those artificial constructs of how we think we have to show up. And right there is the key, how you think you have to show up and how you think others have to show up. And this is non-judgmental. So, mm-hmm. 
This feels you, much nicer. Yes. And the, the, the feeling, the sensation that I was getting as you were talking is besides non-judgmental, uh, it's a sense of well-being, is it's also, it's non-resistance. Yes. Or, because, yes. you know, if you resist lower vibrations, then you're going to magnetically attract them. Right. It's, a, a couple ways I describe it, it's, it's like if you're about to get an injection at the doctor's, if you tense your muscle, it's going <laughs> to hurt. It's going to yeah. get, you know. But, yeah. but so... So energetically, if you are a body of resistance, <laughs> you're, mm-hmm. you are, you're just going to attract and it's going to stay stuck in your space, um, the, you know, the thing that you resist. If you are coming from this sense of well-being like you're, you're discussing, you know, and, and you're in your heart space, but you're not, you haven't lost your discernment. It's, it's, not, it's not that aspect of the heart where you're viewing things through rose-colored glasses and you, well, you're Well, that's denial. the emotional, right. The emotional right, exactly. Thing. You had right. us go beyond the lobby, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, so you're viewing things with, with uh, a more universal love, but you're mm-hmm. not resisting. So it is it, it, the, the, the crazy, in, inappropriate or whatever. Mm-hmm. That energy is passing through you just like, you know, like a breeze through a screen door, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, so in in my classes, I, I actually I teach teach some techniques for this. Um, the original technique was called body of glass, but to me, glass <laughs> glass is not. And it depends on what kind of glass you're. Maybe bulletproof glass, but um, <laughs> I think of it more. What happens energetically is that you are uh, almost like separating your molecules so that the energy can pass through the space between molecules. Um, or I think of it as, as, as like transparency. So um, I, I have people imagine like an invisibility cloak from uh, Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, which isn't necessarily hiding from what's going on, but it's just so that, you know, if energy is flying across the room, it's just passing right through you. Um, so, so that's one thing is an invisibility cloak. And then a little more advanced technique for those of you out there who like to play on all sorts of levels is, is just energetically being a half step above the, the, the prevalent energy. So you, of either the person you're dealing with or the group that you're in, you can imagine yourself at a lighter color. You can imagine yourself at a frequency just that's just a half step above, and that way you're not totally disconnected from what's going on. But you're you're you know you're not underwater with the rest of them. You know your snorkel is your snorkel <laughs> is ab- ab- <laughs> getting some oxygen there. Right. Those are good techniques. Sure. You have to. It's anything is possible, anything is real, anything is all about being uh, able to ride it out, right? And turbulence is, uh, okay, so here's the panic and the resistance part. In this state of expansiveness, there's no restriction, there's no resistance, Resistance is a way that we corral things. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that people appreciate that so much. We've been exploring that in group, and a lot of this started last week in group, in realizing that resistance shapes things. It forms, it directs where the flow goes. So here you have all kinds of information available in this state because there's no resistance. And there's nothing wrong with resistance. Resistance is the, the isometric energy that the body holds. Everybody knows isometrics, right? Re- resistance training. You're working muscle against muscle in order to form and shape tone. So there's nothing wrong with resistance. It's how you use it and to what degree you empower it. We can resist ourselves. We can resist our own awareness often. We know that. We see it happen all the time. And if you're in this state of the heart field arena, you just see that as information. You're not attached to it. And you go, oh, I see what I'm doing. Would I like a different choice? Yeah, maybe I would. Or there's something consciousness in your experience of it is getting out of, there's a value there about it. It's important. Maybe it's to learn love in a different way. 
your condition, you're having an experience, a condition of love, and people are saying it's this, but you're really experiencing it this way. All of it's okay. What it does is it takes it from the emotional charge that you've been holding, except that that is real on one level, but on this level it's not. And we're just allowing for information to flow. And yes. you can really feel that, Joan. People yes. are just really, oh, that's what that is. There's a lot of awareness flowing here. <laughs> yes. And we're going to allow it to come up when we come up um, in a few minutes after a commercial break about yeah. how to bring that awareness is just going to be present because there's no difference. We are always in this state. It's just yes. how much awareness we're holding of it. And we so, have, yeah. We want to invite you to hold this heart space as we go to the commercial break now. And stay tuned because we have a lot more to cover as we play in heart space, dealing with extreme reactions, addictive behavior, panic and resistance, and other fun stuff. The Seventh Wave Channel on the Voice America Network. Are you ready to take a quantum leap in your life? Joan Newcomb is a conscious mastery coach who empowers you to navigate life from your own inner wisdom using energy techniques. Contact her through her website, joan-newcomb.com, and take conscious mastery of your life today. That's joan-newcomb.com. On the program Inside Out, our outsides match our insides. Join host Beth Green along with co-host James Maynard for an insightful weekly journey that lets us all be real with no boundaries. We'll discuss current events, interview amazing guests, challenge old ideas, and see ourselves and our world more clearly. It's about you as much as us. So you're invited to call in, write in, and most of all, tune in. Listen for Inside Out, live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. When you learn to see things from a spiritual perspective, it changes the way you see virtually everything in your life. Listen for Dr. Paula Joyce and her program, Uplift Your Life, Nourishment of the Spirit. Our program will help you get rid of the negative aspects of your life and invite love, joy, and prosperity into your life. Turn that negative feeling into a positive one. Tune in to Uplift Your Life, Nourishment of the Spirit, every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. Be visionary. This is the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. You are listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. To reach our program, please send questions and comments to Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. That's Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. Now, back to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Welcome back. You're listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I'm Joan Newcomb along with Janet Barrett. And Janet and I are leading edge creators in the field of consciousness technology. And right now we are holding heart awareness. We've been in holding heart space and talking about extreme reactions, addictive behavior, panic and resistance. So what are we noticing now, Janet? (laughs) Well, let's see. You know, it's kind of quiet out there, isn't it, Joan? I think people are really using this space to just unwind relax um so i think this is a great place to just notice we were talking about resistance Mm. just notice if you don't have any (laughs) (laughs) and if you just really gave into the concept that you didn't need to resist it's just a way that you're channeling protection you're channeling control resistance is really about control i think and we all have active senses of control. The challenge is where the control is set too tight. It doesn't allow for a flow or variables. Uh, you just get into a lockdown position and you reject everything. And that's not useful that in that left brain. So 
give up the idea that you have to control your control and feel bad about it and just notice that, oh, I could just use a little bit more flow and flex in it. And what would that do? So enjoy that state. The reason that we mentioned panic was because I think underlying as human beings, spiritual creatures in human form, is there's a panic from the transition of disembodiment to embodiment. I think there were few people or small groups roaming nomadic people when humans started walking this place or other energies because we have lots of people with conversations about different things about that. But in this place, you used to be able to roam to be safe. You, the environment shifted, you shifted so that you could feel safe. So you had food, you had water. I think in life was a day-to-day, moment-to-moment experience. And at any place along the way, panic could have set in. And I think that that is in that DNA in all of us. And as we develop more personalities and and human forms populating the place that we have that doesn't go away and it just builds there's a collective energy about having to make the moment to moment choices about survival and i think we're all kind of resonating that to different degrees and i think it's some of those hidden agendas and when you stop to think about how many choices did you make today that if you allowed yourself to be aware that you might have had anxiety about it. Panic is just anxiety that's just, you know, <laughs> metal to the pedal to the metal kind of thing um, that we all have in there. So what if in this state what you're noticing is there's a cessation, uh, uh, no, no, what is it? Not sating, but there's a, there's a cessation. <laughs> what, what is the word? A stopping. Cessation? Uh, a cessation. Yeah, uh, cessation of... Anxiety. What if you could just relax? There you go. Just move into that place of you don't have to think about it. You don't have to make the choice right now. A choice will be there. You'll be much better off in your choices when you're coming from this awareness, space of awareness. And this is a state. Consciousness technologies are about states, um, fields of reference rotational fields, how they get torqued, how they get all kinds of different things. We're talking patterns of energy, um, whether it's a zigzag or a stop and go or whatever. The pa- There's all kinds of different ways energy moves and gets organized. And emotions affect so often the physical template, but they also affect the mental template. They affect how we feel and and respond. And we're taking this out of the reactive state, the automatic reactive state to, ah, let me stop. Let me respond. I want to respond differently here. That's what we're embracing in this state. It's pretty quiet out there, Joan. Yes. Well, you know, this... <laughs> this what I notice is when we've been talking about the extreme reactions or addictive behaviors or we're, we're talking about um, body personality reactions mm-hmm. to things. Mm-hmm. And when we're in this heart space, it's almost like we're flooding our awareness with consciousness, the greater aspect of ourself. And, mm-hmm. and what I notice when I do that is that my body calms down. Mm-hmm. My body feels safe mm-hmm. because it it knows that this greater aspect of me is in here, you know, driving the car. When when I'm not operating from consciousness, it's really like the car is is it's a runaway horse. Is to mix metaphors, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. but or it's a car careening down the freeway. Horses are a good metaphor because horses have their own sort of personality and emotions. Your mm-hmm. car is just a machine, unless right. you're unless it's Herbie the Love Bug. But um, <laughs> which oh okay that might be a good reference. <laughs> right? but, but and and the thing I also find is that you know it's like your horse, your body, so to speak. Your horse, you know, uh, if if you have and kind of you know 
had it jump off cliffs before, it may not trust you. So this is, you know, bringing full consciousness in. Suddenly your body can calm down and go, oh, somebody's driving the car, somebody's riding the horse, you know, mm-hmm. that there, there is, um, it, it's, it's really what we are all seeking. You know, we are seeking this feeling of well-being. We are seeking our full presence. Well, you're talking, what you're describing so beautifully is fight or flight system, the autonomic mm-hmm. nervous system, yeah. right? Now, the horse, we can call, they're really reactive to, and they're not reactive, they respond because yes. they're paying attention and they're geared. And we might even use the term high strung, right? But that's mm-hmm. not necessarily it. They're just so tuned because they're wind creatures they react to the shifts in the winds much uh, quicker than we do and uh, so they are very energetically oriented they're tracking scent they're tracking everything on that wind um, so they dance very lightly on earth and they have learned to they they bridge this space the air the environment in a in a whole different way they respond um, that's what we need to do. They feel, and it's all dictated by how safe they feel. So for us, I don't think we're any different. All of this comes down to a sense of feeling safe, which is root chakra, which is that embryonic fetal state of trust, security, safety. Those are those basic things. That's what life force comes out of. And it's, we're always conditionalizing those, those, uh, those um, ways to observe how what fosters life force there must be security safety and trust which is interesting when you think about that so in heart space we're open to the big all of that and we just notice what reference we want to take it to and what if you could trust that you were safe and secure what if you were secure and safe in safe and trusting? What if you could feel, what is it, trust, secure, safety? What, oh, well, there's the bells ringing. <laughs> okay. The Westminster third level Abbey listening. bells. Yeah, third, third, third level, level listening. listening. What does that mean? What does that um, mean? You know, like, the world you know, is out there knocking on my door, I guess. Um, how, what do we want to do? So everyone, we're coming back to where we want to say thank you to being in this space and just notice you're here all the time. That part of consciousness within you that is like, yeah, I like this. I'm grooving. Bring it back. Bring your awareness back into notice the lobby. Notice the thing that you took out. Maybe bring it back. Is it the same? Take a moment. Just observe. Go back into the elevator. Push the button for today. (laughs) And you notice the button now is not about mind, it's just about today. So push the button for today and notice what it'd be like to just come back up. We want our thinking to come from heart space. So don't make it about thinking, make it about today. Make it about being able to make new choices and see where that takes you. And thank you, it was a lovely trip. Mm. Yeah, the uh, the doorbell chimes. Well, consciousness was knocking at the door. <laughs> the, I think it was FedEx. <laughs> it was it was come come back to you know come back to the lobby to go answer the door. Right, uh, right. It's Mister Chimes. So what so, is it? Yeah, where do we go notice, from here, Joan? Well, what I, one of the couple things before we we're gonna we, we're gonna remind people some things, but just also for folks, notice the difference now that you've come out of that space. It's this like is that's those, key st- yeah. street level awareness. You know, it's like you're back right. out in the street. Right. So, um, not that we're leaving you on the street, but you know, back out <laughs> <laughs> to slow reality. So, so and um, it is a key to noticing what's different, having been there. And that's in how you think, how you feel, how that thing that was you were noticing before, notice it in a new way, see how it shows up. And let it be different. Let it be different. 
So we want to remind folks that you are you are now you have some spaces open for meeting people <laughs> in the North East. Yes, I do. And so I'll be in Boston. This will be the week of October fourteenth. Um, I can see people in Boston that day. And uh, maybe people October 20th, which is the following Monday. And in between, I'm going to go experience fall leaves, my wonderful husband, and other people perhaps in New Hampshire and Maine along the way. So if anyone wants to invite me to join them for something or share uh, some session time with me as we do all this, I would love that. So just... Track me down at Janet B at Janet and dot com or the website and you can reach me through that at www.janetandbeyond.com. And if you uh, want to connect with me, well, one thing is to go to my website, Joan Dash dot com and you can get a uh, a free course that I gave last year, a, a, a teleseminar on manifesting money and miracles. So you can learn some of my energy techniques for expanding your reality in those ways. Also, I have a webinar coming up at the end of this month uh, on reinventing yourself. So stay Ooh. tuned for more information about that. But the other thing I wanted to put in here, too, is to join us on Facebook and Twitter. We just, we love hearing from you. We love connecting with you. And we have a Facebook group, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. So uh, join us there. And also we are on Twitter at Joan and Janet is our Twitter handle. Uh, and send us your suggestions for things to talk about. You know, Dave in Colorado gave us this great topic today. Um, we'll mention you on the air and we'll probably come up with some goodies, special goodies for people who are on our Facebook and Twitter feeds. <gasps> Oh, I do want to remind people before I forget that if they do subscribe uh, to my website, or is that what we're doing on my mail list? Yes, That's yes. it, my mailing list, that I'm offering a $25 discount on any new clients who book a session with me. So it's a chance to reward you for joining in the fun. And um, I write weekly, as you do too, and that. We host have a lot of information on that blog about how to carry on what we talk about here, and always we're both always leaving with tips to to yes. keep these states going. Yeah, so um, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm also on Twitter on my own at at Joan Newcomb uh, on Twitter, um, but join us at Joan and Janet in Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Um, and what do you, you what mind? do you want this week, Joan? What what in this state? What are you noticing that's available? I'm noticing pathways opening, Ooh. and Ooh. I'm really excited. I'm excited for both of us with our show mm-hmm. going so mm-hmm. well, and I'm excited for all these possibilities are opening. I'm I'm feeling really excited about these sort of portals that the eclipses are bringing. I feel really mm-hmm. excited about that new level of growth, and um, so I'm really hoping to. To hear from everybody out there, uh, uh, and our, our new audience here is, uh, all of us are on the leading edge. So if you're listening to us right now, you are, you're on the leading edge of consciousness as well. And you are also helping co-create the show with us today. So, and, um, and no fear of the edge. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, did, whoever felt that, uh, the edge. So just go to the edge. And just notice, what if you could fly? You know, the strongest card on the tarot is the fool. He has his little bag of tools and food. He has his little animal. And he goes adventuring. And he is innocence in action. And that's what we all want to do, is be able to come to the abyss, over the edge, and be willing to fly. And you never know what you might meet. So we'll leave you all with feeling good about yourself and whatever you notice today and know that it's different and it will keep changing. Mm. Yes. So thank you all for joining us. You've been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I'm your host, Joan Newcomb. And I'm Janet Barrett. And we'd like to thank you all for helping us co-create the show by tuning in. So no matter when you are listening, live or in the future, your energies, since there is no time or space, have contributed to our experience here today. And we invite you to tune in next week for another great show. 
，拜拜，拜。You've been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Thanks so much for helping to co-create the show. No matter whether you're tuning in live or listening on demand, you energetically contribute to our collective experience. Joan and Janet love to hear from you and invite you to email your comments and ideas for them to explore each week. Contact them at Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. Tune in next Wednesday for another great show at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, and 10 p.m. UTC on the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. Oh, 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 oh,